Dear viewers, I am happy to welcome you again at the venue of the International Transport and Logistics Forum of uh, Promotion uh, 1520. Uh, we just saw the end of uh, the uh, panel on the mechanisms of uh, improving resilience of uh, freight uh, rail transportation in the COVID-19 era. And the day started off uh, with discussing uh, the uh, improving efficiency of international rail transportation. Uh, Vladimir Kosoy uh, was the moderator of this uh, uh, panel, and we discussed uh, uh, the situation with him uh, here in the studios. Vladimir Wolfovich, здравствуйте. Good afternoon, Vladimir. I know that you were moderating this discussion on mechanisms to increase the resilience of in railway transport. So what is the main conclusion from that session? Well, you know, in the end of the discussion, one of the one of the panelists, Sergei Pavlov, the first deputy director of Russian Railways, said that, first of all, we have to remember that everything that we do is aimed at building an ecosystem, and that is truly so, because railway transportation includes the owners of the infrastructure, rolling stock operators, customs, freight forwarders, IT services, logistics operators. So this is a very complex system and developing an echo system in one digital space, that is the foundation of everything we do. And the second conclusion mentioned by Gennady Bessonov was that our development outlook is two and a half, three containers a year. This is a very ambitious target, which we had never dreamt of before, and the COVID pandemic played a very interesting role here because there was a decline in mass freight movement and passenger movement and container transportation, high margin transportation increased a lot in the past few months. I will follow up on the digital services, but now let us talk about this tremendous growth in transit, two and a half million containers a year. Will the infrastructure be able to handle this volume, or we need to expand it? Well, you know, if we're talking about more Moving 100 million tons, well, first of all, we need to develop the network infrastructure, expand the rolling stock, so that is the extensive development. When it comes to high margin freight movement, that's an absolutely different story. Because moving high margin freight requires the upgrade of infrastructure, the way terminals are interconnected, the way we liaise between different customs on the border crossing points, the way the national railway administrations cooperate. This kind of transformation does not require any significant investment into the railway network infrastructure. I think that it's a little bit premature to think that we will be able to start moving two and a half million containers right away. But with all that is happening in the background, like Sergei has mentioned, that the speed of transit for 
container cargo should increase dramatically, and this will make us competitive with air transportation. And if you look at the coast part of air cargo transportation, well, uh, the competitive advantage is colossal. What would be the role? What would be the role played by digital instruments and digital technologies in addressing these objectives? I have already started talking about that in the very beginning. Mr. Jensen uh, from VR Group, uh, that is the Finnish Railways, had a very interesting presentation on this topic. And uh, I have to digress a little bit here. You know, we do have some serious infrastructure-related limitations today, and this has been mentioned a few times, like, for example, uh, the Polish railways uh, cannot maintain the same speed of transit as the Russian railways. Same is true for our colleagues uh, in Belarus or in Kazakhstan. There are still lots of barriers we need to overcome, and Finnish railways have tremendous opportunities opening for them because they also have such great ports as the port of Turku, for example. So I see that uh, there is a lot of potential for developing our transit cooperation with European neighbors, not only the Baltic states or Poland or our southern neighbors, but also with Finland. Speaking about the digital technologies, I have already mentioned that. Digitalization today is a must. Is a must if you want to, if you, if you want your stations to run smoothly, if you want this schedule to be maintained. If you want to smoothly hand over all the documents uh, between various administrations successfully. We have already mentioned that yesterday an agreement was signed on a blockchain project between Russian Railways and Maersk. This is all another manifestation of this uh, huge-scale cooperation. We can talk blockchain as much as we can, but it's all built on our capability to transit cargo smoothly. We address the issue of digitalization, digital document flow, digitalization of cargo movement, and we seamlessly hand over the documents from one country to another, from one administration to another, from one mode of transport, air, Truck, railway to another, because in the end our clients want to get a door-to-door -door delivery. Previously, previously railway transport could not compete with other modes of transport because it was not able to deliver goods to the end user door. And uh, the, the last mile segment was heavily dominated by trucks. But if we manage to set up efficient relationship uh, with our partners, uh, we will gain uh, an additional competitive advantage. Vladimir, and my last question. Do the clients need? Do the clients have any new requirements to railway transport? What has changed in view of this COVID situation? One of the biggest shifts was that if previously the clients would choose deep sea transportation and they would be quite happy with 
with the duration of delivery from Asia to Europe of about two months. Uh, they only cared uh, that uh, this cargo is delivered on time. They just need to know the date. So they shipped the goods and they want to receive those goods by a certain date in the European shops. When the pandemic started and when the regulators in different countries started various chaotic like actions, uh, well, the supply and delivery chains got disrupted and companies uh, tried to find new ways to deliver spare parts, goods, commodities on time. And railway operators proved to be a lot more flexible than other transport operators, they managed to ramp up their services and the quality of service, was, which helped them to increase the volume of transit by rail, despite the overall decline in the international trade. Thank you so much for the interview. For those who have just joined, uh, just let me remind you that you are watching the live broadcast of the International uh, Transport and Logistics Forum uh, Demotion uh, uh, 1520. Over 3,000 uh, viewers and users uh, joined our forum uh, yesterday. In a minute now, we are going to have another panel on the uh, upgrades and modernization of the rolling stock in the new reality of uh, cargo shipments in uh, to 2020 against the uh, background of the falling loads uh, and the need to upgrade the rolling stock, uh, the industry faced uh, a surplus of the rolling stock and the sharp decline of the demand. Uh, in August, the fleet uh, reached almost 1.2 million uh, cars, which is 10.8 percent more than in the end of 2016. How the volumes and structure of the uh, car fleet was changing in the Russian uh, Railways uh, can be is presented at the diagram of the Institute of uh, Natural Monopolies. Uh, we see that there is a growing number of uh, the uh, rolling stock in the Russian railways since 2016. The most intensive uh, growth was between uh, 2018 and 2019, when the uh, growth rate of the fleet was 5 percent. And this year, the growth rate was go going down, and we only received uh, 1.8 percent more of cars. Uh, than last year. Of course, uh, real data for August might be quite different, uh, but there is uh, some general tendency there. Most of the fleet uh, are open box cars, 47.7%, uh, and their uh, share actually increased the most uh, since 2016 by 3.5 percentage points, uh, followed by uh, tank cars, and their uh, share in the overall fleet is 20.8%, uh, which uh, actually decreased in the last five years by 3.3%. Other types of cars, um, uh, platforms, hoppers, uh, covered cars, and other types uh, are only a third of the fleet, and their total share in the last five years changed insignificantly. And now I am told that the uh, members of the next uh, uh, panel are ready, and I give the floor now to the strategy hall for their panel. Good afternoon, colleagues. I'm glad to see all of you at our Transport and Logistical Forum of Promotion 1520. We are starting panel discussion about rolling stock, renewal of the rail car fleet. It is clear that today we will be talking about new rail cars, what to do to the old rail cars, what rail cars are needed by the country for the by the carrier and the, by the apparatus today we have wonderful 
group of speakers and participants in the studio and online, all parties to the industrial process related to the production and operation of rail cars. Kirill Gench Tomashuk, Deputy General Director for the Civil Production from Ural Wagon Zavod. Online, we have Dmitry Vitalievich Karov, Deputy Head of the CFTO for the cargo operation of Russian Railways. Mikhail Sapetov, Head of the rail car operations of Russian Railways. Sergei Alexandrovich Romanov, Deputy Head of Department of Production Infrastructure of the Federal Freight Company. Anna Mikhailovna Orlova, Deputy Director for the Strategy of the United Rail Car Company. Denis Latovsky, Deputy General Director and Director for Logistics of SWEC. And Sergei Sergeyevich Korsky, General Director of the company Taxio Group. Colleagues, thank you very much for finding time and attending our session. I'm Alexey Harnov, Chief Editor of Good Oak Newspaper. I will moderate the session. My objective is to give opportunity to speak up for everyone. Please understand that sometimes I will remind participants that the time is not limited. My objective is also, my job is to observe the schedule. So I suggest to switch to the discussion of the first point of agenda of the program that me and my colleagues composed. We'll talk about how the demand for rail car is being formed during the surplus of rail cars. I'd like to give the floor, first of all, to Galina Orlova, Al Mikhailovna Orlova, and she has presentation. I'd like to show it on the screen. Al Mikhailovna, you have the floor. Hello, colleagues. United Rail Car Company is not demand, it's supply from the standpoint of rail cars. Rail cars, I don't see presentation myself. All right, thank you. Rail cars developed by the Uni United Rail Car Company and uh, produced by the plant is based on the components of these rail cars supplied at present time and today time between failures eight years inter repair time is million kilometers increased guaranteed sections up to six thousand and a half kilometers four for some models of rail cars five times decrease of the frequency of the current repair and first turning of wheel set at uh, 350,000 kilometers. Such rail cars are explored in four axle and also six axle articulated type. It allows to increase not only capacity, but the mass of the train. The mass of train can achieve 7,200 tons for six axle up to 9,000 tons. Substantial increase of volume of transportation by one train of different types of cargo. It's not only gondolas, but also hoppers and all types of nomenclature of tankers for chemical cargo and for petroleum. However, such rail cars on the network produced by a company about 100,000, 10,000 pieces. We understand that demand for them substantially depends on formation of regulatory and economical foundation framework that provides investment attractiveness of this particular wagons. It responses to modern requirements in terms of decrease of the needed fleet for certain volume of transportation from the standpoint of inter-maintenance runs in terms of the non-production idling and during current repair. 
and also during preparation for transportation. Uh, let's see next slide. At the same time, we work on things such as development of universal rolling stock, quote unquote, for transportation of specialized cargo. Designed and fully completed testing of flat car for transportation of containers and replaceable bodies with six axles per rail car. Such flat car provides a competitive advantage to the four axle rail car because containers usually have small capacity and in six axle type flat car is two times provides efficient increase of efficiency of transportation of grain and by 40 percent with transportation of coal with replaceable bodies why replaceable bodies not containers containers is universal multi-purpose objects that have limited size substantially less in size in comparison to the size of the railway stock rolling stock replaceable bodies that can be in PPR size clearance loading gauge help to increase capacity and increase uh, useful volume for transportation of cargo with de low density. Separate attention can be noticed, should be noted, of the niche products. We see that on the market we have discussion of the container flat cars for the high speed transportation. Such flat car can be created on the basis of existing development of OVK with application of the well explored components. However, the question is presence of the infrastructure. All of us know the story of the 27 tons per axle when rail car builders explored construction of rail cars with this axle load and they tested. However, mass production of rail car did not happen because of the absence and non readiness of infrastructure for such conveyance. In my position, situation happens with the flat cars for the high speed container trains. OVK works on quite a big number of the projects for export markets. Interesting is the project that allows to provide seamless transition from one gauge to another, not through the usage of expandable wheel sets, but through changing of the swap bodies replaceable bodies from one type of rolling stock from one flat car to another at the border crossing stations. We also consider digital technologies on board telemetrics and accounting of the railway stock. Also, the last slide please. I'd like to I'd like to draw attention to the fact that rail car construction is industry that lives and coexists with all participants of the market of freight transportation. Without presence of such comprehensive approach that would provide investment attractiveness of buying rail cars in principle, first of all, the rail cars that provide solution for the problem for infrastructure, for the consigners, for consignees. For this reason, we, through the union of rail car con constructors, interact with the regulators in different ways, 
in terms of development of a comprehensive state strategy for development of transport infrastructure and the rail car fleet. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Anna Mikhailovna. One can see by presentation that engineering thinking is ready to step to the future, but the question whether those who operate the rail cars can go with you. Of course, to Latovsky, a person under whose management who has a big fleet of rail cars. In your view, considering the situation with loading, with economics, did the time come to renew rail car fleet? Or we should wait when economics grow or goes to the expanding? Colleagues, I'm glad to see all of you. I didn't quite understand. Are we talking about new variants of rolling stock, six axis and articulated, or we talk about traditional rail cars as well? No, we talk about general renewal of rail car fleet, replacement of classical rail cars with rail cars of extra capacity and purchase of new types of rolling stock, that, including those that Anna Mikhailova has presented to you. You know, an area of 50,000 gondolas and 4,000 mineral transporters. We transport uh, with Ural Eurakim and many others about 25 million tons of other cargoes. Of course, we always have question of renewal of rail cars and uh, some growth of fleet under management. The market stimulates us, yeah. market of our cargo, there are some tricks, some catches we need to talk about in this community. One is the Eastern Network, we try to expand it in 2018 and increase capacity by 55 and let it change for 66 million tons. Construction moved with end of 2022. It will we anticipate 2025 transit in seven days. And development of infrastructure will help to increase transportation volume by the factor of two. 210 million tons that we have to achieve transporting to the east in 2025. Such traffic flow means plus 100,000 new rail cars of additional demand. The calculation was made by two years ago. What does it say? It says that there is a freight base and there is a hidden demand for the products of machine building industry, for the gondolas and other types of rolling stock. In order to realize this hidden demand, we need to quickly build uh, trunk lines and uh, commission, commission Eastern Network. There are simple examples. For instance, we increase together with the Russian railways increase volume from Chalutai at Eastern Siberian Railway. We learned to send heavy trains. In January, we sent first, and now we send five and a half heavy trains per day. And this is how much Kuzba sends the grow of loading through the increase of heavyweight trains. For this, we need innovative rail cars and powerful locomotives. In the beginning of the year, if we realized the plan that we have with Russian railways to achieve seven trains per day, it means that we'll be ready to order 2,000 additional rail cars from the machine builders. It's concrete example, concrete station, and concrete agreement with Russian railways. 2,000 during what period of time? Sorry. Even tomorrow, if we can transport the cargo. In fact, we have delivery to Tungu concentration plant. We can ship tomorrow. If we can transport them tomorrow, we would order new rail cars tomorrow. Such tricks exist in the nature. 
I need to work carefully with leasing companies, with machine builders, and with the consigners. We need to look for opportunities. In particular, there's potential such as increase of number of the heavy trains sent from Kuzbas to the east. Now they send six trains per day. The plan of central directorate of movement, 15 trains per day. The difference between 6 and 15 equals 3 million tons. If we together can send not 6 but 15 heavy trains from west to east, it means that we'll transport extra 3 million tons, 2 to 3 thousand additional rail cars needed. It's one direction. In another direction, operational environment and fleet management. Colleagues from Russian Railways during previous sessions reported that turnover of rail cars grew, but this number is made of the rail cars that roll and out others that are idling. If we look at the rail cars that are rolling, we see that uh, we see a turnover improvement by 6%. If we count all year, our rail cars sold 50,000 roll faster than last year due to technology built together with Russian railways due to heavyweight trains and routing. We slightly decreased the demand for rail cars. Through the acceleration, it plays in different direction. One must say about routing. Today, Roman Fedorovich says about the growth of the routing for improvement of technology. We, in 2020, were able to increase routing of empty trip from 15 to 45 percent in all shipments. We automated from that Transugol port, we route about half of all shipments from all power plants where we transport to the internal market. So improvement of technology is compulsory thing, necessary to decrease the cost for transportation, but it has a flip side, a short, a shortening of the demand for rolling stock. For additional need, we need to improve infrastructure, and the process will be slightly surplus situation. Thank you. I'm not sure if I answered the question. You answered partially, but you switched to the answer to, to the Russian railways and capacity of infrastructure. And this is what, sorry. You speak of 100,000 uh, 100, wagons, railway wagons. Uh, I mean, we could accommodate, we could process if uh, Russian railways, uh, the Russian railway network manages to upgrade its infrastructure. So last year, we only uh, we issue, uh, we almost uh, issued uh, 75 uh, railroad railway wagons Russia-wide. Then now, uh, now that production is shrinking due to missing missing demands. So within how long will it take us to cover the needs of I mean, 100,000 uh, railway wagons? It's quite, a, quite a, an easy question with the current loads and with the load forecasts. This uh, figure, 100,000 railway, railway wagons, will require three to five years to produce. Three to four years, years make my 
might also be feasible, a feasible timeline, uh, but more likable timeline uh, is four to five years. I mean, gondola cars, which will be badly needed, uh, should we manage to remove the bottlenecks, infrastructural bottom, bot bottom bottlenecks, and we'll do it ourselves, right, we we'll manage. The estimated production capacity uh, of Russia's uh, uh, rail, railway wagon manufacturers is about uh, 100,000 railway wagons. Сергей Сергеевич, к вам вопрос. Мы вот сейчас говорили в основном про полувагоны. Понятно, на сегодняшний день это самый массовый состав на сети. Хотя вчера на панельной дискуссии Олег Валентинович Белозеров сказал, что для нас полувагон перестает быть таким универсальным подвижным составом. Его место постепенно занимает платформа. Но пока это, конечно, решилось не все. Вот... Вы по своему бизнесу, да, по своей работе, как оцениваете спрос на подвижной состав в этом году? Сказалось ли на вас тот профессор подвижного состава, который сформировался? Он, напомню, сейчас составляет более 20 тысяч вагонов в России. Uh, the current need, uh, what is your take on the current uh, need in the rolling stock uh, in, the, in the current year? And do you think we're going to have to purchase a tangible number of, um, of, new, of new railroad wagons in the couple of years to come? Well, I think we are talking, what we're talking about is uh, uh, a niche market and its needs. Um, and we are talking about uh, primarily about uh, oil, oil transports assembled and assorted uh, tank uh, tanks. Um, you know uh, these. Uh, New cars, uh, you know, these tanks uh, enable us, help us carry uh, more weight by factor of 2.18. This is achieved uh, not uh, by uh, the carrying capacity of the bogies, but the uh, but the uh, increased volume of the tanks themselves. We've managed to create and design uh, uh, gas tanks and gas holders uh, which require no uh, changes and modifications in the infrastructure. But to pick up on your question, to pick up on your question, uh, as for uh, what kind of demand we can expect uh, in, in, in wagons, railway wagons. Well, as an operator, we are considering um, the purchase of new railroad wagons uh, on the basis of the infrastructural products and uh, transportation needs we may face. Should we should we involve uh, should we face uh, higher needs? Should we have to carry more more stuff? Then we'll just uh, uh, consider purchasing new uh, new railway wagons. We are about to witness the emergence of uh, of new of a new variety of uh, tank wagons. Uh, for carrying to carry uh, gas uh, and other substances, which will also be a major step forward. To us, this assembled uh, design or assorted or assembled design uh, of, uh, of tank wagons has uh, indisputable, indisputable advantages. If you can, if you look at the chart, uh, at, at the slide I've shown, you will see that this variety, wagon variety, can do without without uh, one wheel set or even one bogey. 
This, of course, will result in reduced costs, tangibly re reduced costs. So, and this is something. Uh, so we 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 focus on liquefied gas. Uh, transport Спасибо. and this uh, assembled uh, this new variety of tank wagons uh, that choose one, uh, one belgi less uh, is, is something extremely positive, something encouraging. My question is to Dmitry Vitalievich. Dmitry Vitalievich, we are discussing new types of rolling stock, new varieties of rolling stock, rolling stock, so called assembled or consolidated tank wagons. We have discussed new revolutionary types of wagons. Uh, the so-called pallet wagons uh, uh, that, uh, that are loadable uh, quickly, very quickly uh, loadable and unloadable uh, assembled varieties. The question is, is the current railway infrastructure ready, railway infrastructure ready to accommodate these new varieties? Uh, there are experts and there are staff members who have the uh, skills. Do the existing the existing workers uh, and personnel does the exist do the existing personnel have this in, the requisite skills uh, to handle such uh, such uh, wagons of new types? Dear colleagues, I'm very happy to take part be taking part in this forum. My point is, uh, uh, we must take the trouble and prepare ourselves for any modification uh, in railway infrastructure. We now, uh, and we are doing it now. Um, uh, we are try. We are going to change. Uh, introduce changes in the usage of terminals uh, of, of terminals just to make these terminals loading and unloading terminals to accommodate make sure they accommodate the needs of the current client needs and future client needs uh, we can anticipate uh, the trend which involves uh, well new trends uh, well I think I I would agree that the railway infrastructure should be prepared to accommodate uh, heavy duty uh, wagons and heavy duty trains since recently we have been uh, upgrading uh, we have been upgrading our uh, our rolling stock our train infrastructure uh, to make sure uh, to make sure just to uh, to make sure it can accommodate uh, units of rolling stock uh, with a weight of, uh, of about 100 tons the introduction of new variety of new rolling stock varieties including specialized ones um, that can be handled at terminals will require uh, deep modifications in the infrastructure and in the technology. We are quite aware of it. And it so happens that today most of our talk is revolving uh, heavy duty uh, rolling stock varieties and handling uh, heavy volumes and heavy weights. But content containerization, so called containerization, uh, is another uh, key focus. Uh, coal, for instance, can be carried uh, in containers. Uh, liquefied gas can be carried in containers. Um, bulk freight, wheat, 
um, uh, corn can be carried in, con in containers. So recently, we've uh, we've been uh, observing uh, tests of new containers, so-called uh, counter containers, counter containers, counter uh, counter containers. Uh, it's uh, another quite in an innovative variety of uh, rolling stock. So heavy duty, heavy stock, rolling stock varieties uh, with, uh, uh, with an increased uh, uh, axle load is not the only uh, realm, of, uh, realm of activity because the market is, is, is evolving and we must take this really in, into account. So, this is what we should always keep in mind. Yeah, we should always be mindful of it. So, we've gradually, we've uh, gradually made uh, a transition from uh, one set of issues to, to operational related issues. So, owners uh, of the rolling stock uh, rolling but stock will be owned by private operators and the in railway infrastructure uh, is owned by the Russian railway operators. So who should accommodate, who is going to have to accommodate to whose needs? Uh, is it the operators that must uh, adopt or uh, adjust uh, uh, to the owners of the infrastructure or vice versa. Every time designers are designing a new variety, uh, a new variety of railway wagons, they try to take into account the needs of uh, railroad railway wagon operators. And they conduct tests and they de uh, define test procedures. And while they do, while they are doing it, they try to be mindful of, uh, of, of the capacity of the infrastructure, uh, and uh, they try to be mindful of the uh, prospective wagon operators, uh, wagon operators' needs. Well, I think they are still managing to find this, uh, find this very fine, subtle balancing act between. Uh, the infrastructural needs uh, between the needs of uh, rail, railway wagon creators. Uh, while the design uh, is in progress, uh, they just uh, the designers try to make sure they uh, try to make life easier for for operators who operate these wagons. Um, they want to they just they just want to help uh, uh, railway wagon operators to 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 use to make easier use of uh, uh, diagnostic tools, uh, uh, which we certainly have. So, and these two points are quite important. So, we must keep in mind, and we always keep in mind, that a railway wagon must not incur uh, high costs between repairs, must not, must be repair friendly. On the one hand, and on the, on the other hand, um, there are innovative. Uh, there are innovative. Uh, there is innovative uh, um, rolling stock. Uh, its share is about 14.5 percent. And these innovative uh, railway wagon varieties uh, can be easier, uh, more easily operated at some on some segments. And it is our mission to make sure they will not need any extra technical uh, maintenance or repairs while they are carrying goods, which, once again, which again will result in, uh, in better efficiency.
So these are our, our primary objectives, and this is what we expect. Uh, this is what we expect of, uh, of innovative uh, uh, rolling stock varieties. But on the other hand, uh, uh, we've got conventional railway cars. Their share is 85.6% of the existing rolling stock. We must have a very clear idea of what we uh, do, do, do about it. So every time, every time we consider purchasing new trains, we must uh, uh, be able to handle the conventional rolling stock properly. 120,000 rail cars in 2020. There was order of conducting maintenance. In my view, it should be some balance of interest that would allow yet to form optimal balance of the fleet, the rail cars that will have guaranteed loading by the cargo. And slightly more complicated and financially intensive. It's also important to consider infrastructure. That was suggested by some million, two hundred thousand will come to one and a half million. It's capacity issue. In my view, we need to work on the problem of optimal structure of the balance of the fleet and have to look at how much fleet we need to provide transportation and get rid of the excess fleet that decreases the capacity of Russian railways. But operation, as I said, is ready to work with new rolling stock, even more so that we conduct common work after manufacturing and access to infrastructure of new generation and operation and maintenance together with rail car builders. Thank you very much, Mikhail Vladimirovich. I have a question to Sergei Armanov. A question is slightly provocative for our session, but yet, Sergei Alexandrovich, in our management have huge fleet of gondola including tell us in your opinion in your experience can we take all volume of cargo without principally changing the fleet of rolling stock and changing for innovative by using some other technologies by introduction of virtual coupling whether you can increase capacity using at the eastern polygon throughput. Can these technologies be replacement for the uh, rail car fleet? I mean, global replacement. Thank you, Alexei, for the floor. I'd like to welcome all participants of today's conference answering your question. I will note that key type of rolling stock in a company is gondola cars. So first of all, let me note that this component, as it was stated earlier, innovation. We still believe that through innovative rail cars we could increase throughput and transportation. What is necessary for this? It is necessary, as we believe, to find balance of the fleet. In our forecast, till 2030, we see steady su surplus. If we don't do anything, what do we propose? We propose trade-in. It's fashionable wood. It's a buzzword. It is used by automotive people, uh, selling real estate, even by selling cell phones. But we don't change car for car. We offer cars that are approaching service life end. 
So the operators use three old rail cars, give to the plant, in the return they receive one innovative, plus the plant receives subsidy from the state. We believe that this measure could be efficient. Through this measure, we could um, get rid of the excess excess rail cars of all construction would, would renew the fleet by new rail cars. What is the benefit uh, for the operators? At present time we still see that rail cars part of the fleet are idling, but through the decrease of total number of the rail cars on the network, we could roll. What is the benefit for the plants? The plants receiving as the property of rolling stock on the condition of compulsory exclusion of it by automated databases, this rail cars will not go to the network. The spare parts that will be in rail cars, the apparatus will not be able to use anymore, will not be as we recently tried five years ago with mass write-off of old rail cars, will not have counterfeit parts. In general, it will be benefit for entire market, so the system of trade-in would help us to optimize the fleet from one side, on the other hand, to renew it. For example, average age of our rail cars, 12 years. In general fleet, for gondola it's 10 years. We always watch our fleet. For example, this year we write off about 1,700 rail cars and we buy 4,800, 3,800. 34 are gondola cars, and all gondola cars are innovative. Thank you. Thank you very much. You told us about secrets of not operators, that they, what they receive. The manufacturing plant also receives something that Kirill Yurievich, I have a question to you. We call it trade-in, but classical trade-in in automotive world, as I see it and understand it, when you return old car and the dealer sells it to someone, you're not interested whom he sells it. Will you sell the rail car? to other countries, for instance, uh, countries where they need them. First of all, I'd like to support colleagues. Trade in, quote unquote, we work on this topic since end of last year. And the first name was subsidized early write off. Trade in, as the name appeared just recently. Also, I'd like to try to oppose that even we believe that to limit write off three old for one new cannot be feasible. The right thing is made from one to three. This is our opinion. When an operator or the owner of rail car can offer from one to three rail cars that don't expire yet in exchange for new rail cars and for subsidy. And further, if directly answer your question, we always believed that it is necessary necessary for rail cars to be written off not by the owners but should be recycled by the rail car building plants so that they don't get, as earlier stated, to the repeated circulation of parts and so that there's no counterfeit parts. The only exclusion is, we believe, for the wheels, not for the wheel sets, for the wheels, because we all remember 2019, we remember the shortage, we increasing price almost three times for wheels in the situation for the manufacturers of the rail cars and the operators uncomfortable. So here we believe 
that we should allow the wheels on the written off rail cars will be worn out. However, we believe that we can permit the only one repeated usage of wheels and the rail cars will be submitted and the accounting price for new rail car will be roughly cost of the scrap that we will surrender the manufacturers surrender as scrap. So I fully support my colleague. There should not be presence in this program, should not be repeated usage of majority of the parts, except for the wheels. Thank you very much, Kirill Yurievich. Just last week, in publishing house, Good Dog, we had round table dedicated to the repair of rail cars. One of the speakers made interesting presentations about the fate of the wheels. So he made assumption that there is a surplus of the wheels for several years ahead. So the wheels should be remelted. You see, we live in the century when shortage replaces sur surplus. And the numbers for the producers when they receive during shortage are even out during surplus. So we cut the peaks. Situation with the wheels, we can use them as a scrap. In the future, it will allow to avoid shortage and repetition of 2019. Yes, yes, thank you very much. Do I understand you correctly that you don't insist on Formula 3 to 1, but exchange of price scrap for new rail car. Surrender 5 million. We believe that should be more degrees of freedom. The large operators that have picked number of the rolling stock, they are in position to organize 3 to 1 scheme. And the small operators, we will cut away cut away certain participants of this program. So we believe that dependent on the wishes of uh, the car owners, you can surrender from three to one. This is our position. It's discussable. We don't believe it's final truth. Thank you. Anna Mikhailovna, as I understand, United Rail Car Building Company also is in favor of trade-in. We support realization of this program. I'm suspended. I'm asking, do you support realization of this program? No matter whether it's three to one, but the exchange of old rail cars for the new ones. Yes, we can see the commercial attractiveness of trading, specifically from the standpoint of how it can potentially function. For instance, we can see that opportunity with the um, we considered life cycle of rail car, what's efficient, conduct overhaul of rail cars, or surrender it for trade-in and receive new rail car. Unquestionably, for those rail cars, which paid back we had lengthy period of the high rate for particularly gondola cars it happens that uh, if we can see the all costs for repair for um, uncoupling repair If it pays economically, if you buy a new rail car in exchange for the old ones, you don't need to do repair and it will be operated. The question remains, such as whether you can use spare parts.
received from the old rail car that it has been written off. The economics and economical effect can be used if the spare parts go back to the market. In the opposite case, if the price of rail car is equal to the scrap cost, there is no economical interest. And for this very reason, the question would be the subsidy, since in order to cover the difference between return of the spare parts to the market and uh, direct writing off for assembly of new rail car. Do I understand it correctly? From the standpoint of stimulation of production, exactly is important that all spare parts are being recycled. Yes, certainly. From the standpoint of the state objective to incentivize production and production of our suppliers of the spare parts, what is interesting is the optimization, maybe excluding the wheels, as the colleague said earlier. Thank you very much. Kirill Yurevich, trade in as this scheme was not created in our country. Automotive people brought it from abroad. When you develop this scheme, do you incline, do you rely on international experiences, well-known experiences, you said yourself. For the first time in Russia, it was used by the automotive people. It's the global world experience. We went different way. When we prepared this program and started to develop it, we communicated with the operators who received, as the colleague said, from FGK, who received from the operators as positive rep reference on the current conditions and on the current rates and the rental rates, this program can be efficient. We went not the way of club experience is clear. We rather used the feedback from the operators before making this program more or less public. When we started to discuss it, we discussed it with the operators, with the owners of the rolling stock, only after receiving positive, positive feedback we started to make it public. So this was the approach, and right away to continue. In your view, is it possible to realize this trading program without state subsidy? In our view, no. In our view, very special conditions should occur and the disconnected rail cars that need maintenance, we believe without subsidy and the question of the value of subsidy, because in the recent times a lot of discussion happened about different variants. The question of value if without subsidy. We believe that such conditions will not occur where this program is possible. Even if we imagine it will be minimal, it will not be significant considering the number of the rail cars. Elena Mikhailovna, do you share this opinion? Do you need subsidy? If we need to stimulate market and manage write-off of parts, subsidy is needed. Without it, it loses the attractiveness. Colleagues, I'd like to go back to operation of new generation rail cars, as we call them, innovative rail cars. A lot of arguing around it. And as far as I remember the news about operation of a notice rail car, the arguments about economical efficiency don't vanish. Question to Sergei Alexandrovich as the operator that has a notice rail cars in the fleet. There is active discussion of the tariff policy of Russian railways. There is discussion of uh, lifting 
benefit for the empty run of innovative rail cars. The changes will attractiveness of this rolling stock remain, otherwise they will start operation in minus. Alexey Vladimirovich, I'd like to first of all answer your question as the rail car person and touch the topic of the rail car component. For example, in 2020, we finished comprehensive control operation of rail car 129602, which we conducted for more than two years. As the result, we have positive conclusion, positive statement of all characteristics. They were confirmed. But this fact makes, makes us very joyful. If you remember our statement made two years or three years ago, in relation to the rail car builders, we expressed many criticism. Our rail cars idled. The idling was overwhelming as of today. What is the situation? The situation today is clearly better. We don't have idling which we had in the past. We see that producers slightly differently approach the topic of service. At given time, the most problematic we have will. In our fleet, we use innovative rail cars, not only built in 2018-2019, but earlier construction rail cars. The time has come to replace the wheels. What happened today in the market, the price at price of 212,000 per wheel is the unfair too high. Maximum price for wheel, for a wheel, as we calculated, should not exceed cost of 150, 160,000 rubles in innovative rail cars. So it's only in this case that innovative rail, uh, rail cars, railway wagons, the uh, be be really efficient and will be in high demand among operators. Sorry, you've, 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 uh, you've uh, mentioned this price, uh, 212,000. Uh, uh, is it just per one wheel set? Or what is this price for? It's a price for one wheel set, and so we had, so we had a wheel set. We had it repaired, uh, and then they charged. We were charged 212,000 rubles per wheel, uh, per wheel set, just for the repairs. Okay, dear colleagues, since we have started talking uh, about reliability, since we have started talking about operating uh, innovative uh, rolling stock varieties and wagon, railway wagons, you've run research uh, on this topic. How efficient are uh, innovative uh, railway wagons from the standpoint of uh, uh, the frequency of repairs. Have, these, uh, have the, uh, inno uh, the manufacturers of innovative railway uh, wagon varieties uh, fulfilled their promises? Well, uh, we can't say with confidence they've uh, uh, they're up to part. Uh, they've, they they comply with the specifications uh, uh, for their new innovative cars. So we've uh, they can run uh, they can run without repairs about 600, 600 
uh, 6,000 kilometers without, without repairs. And our colleagues are uh, also shown from the uh, from from one of Russia's biggest biggest. Uh, um, 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 car manufacturers uh, have reached uh, amazing results. This benchmark 8, this goal uh, to have uh, wagons run for 8 years uh, and to run a distance uh, of at least 800,000 kilometers is something uh, we are aiming at, we are aiming for. And this, of course, is impossible uh, without reaching these uh, intermediate goals. As for innovative, uh, well, we are doing quite well. Since we have touched on this topic, uh, how efficient is the use uh, efficient is the use of bearings, uh, new bearings uh, in older cars? Ну, скажем так, мы все были, наверное, несколько в стране тех дискуссий, которые были в прошлом году по переходу переходу на кассетные подшипники, потому что мы, в общем, производили соответственно, какое будет, какие регламенты, то и мы будем делать. So we were, у нас есть мнение, мы считаем, что просто правильно сказали, обстановка не замена технических требований. But you've made a very good point. You cannot remove, resolve a problem uh, by just replacing one, com one component, components among many. It may uh, re uh, resolve issues, uh, coupling or uh, uncoupling uh, related issues. Uh, but you're quite right. Uh, our main objective was not to replace, uh, to, to uh, convert to uh, cassette type or taper bearings, but just our main goal was to was to use new types, a new type of, uh, of boggy, of a boggy. And our main objective was to have uh, our railway wagons run for eight, for 4,500 kilometers without depot repairs, and as a result, we would, uh, we would find find ourselves in a situation, uh, the situation uh, would be tantamount to purchasing a new wagon, an absolutely new wagon. So we've run calculations, and again, replacing one part is just, uh, is not enough. In, uh, it's not really enough. We, we need to go for more massive uh, modifications. We are discussing uh, heavy-duty uh, heavy duty trains or with increase or wagons with uh, higher carrying capacities. Uh, sometimes it's, uh, it was called uh, innovative wagons. Innovative. So what is the average life cycle of innovation uh, in the railway, uh, railway sector? You know, at what point in time are we going to stop using the word innovative, uh, speaking of something, uh, and something else because because something else will appear in the horizon? It's a philosophical issue. In, in, in my understanding, it's a philosophical issue. The current demand and the need in 15 heavy-duty uh, trains, we can only operate as many as six uh, with the current state of the uh, uh, of the rolling stock. But I think uh, this innovative wagon will continue being innovative as long as there is a need, uh, the need for it. As I, I would cite as a separate issue, um, um, as a separate issue, the problem of generations. This uh, uh, 1934 boggy was uh, this 18th 
100 bogey was designed in, in the year 1934, and it has been running ever since. In other words, uh, in other words, it took over 70 years uh, just for another generation of railway wagons to appear. Something, I mean, something we could uh, we, uh, we could call not really innovative. So as long as we haven't yet witnessed a uh, a change in generations, as as long as we have not yet witnessed uh, any market-driven revolutionary trend, you know, the uh, the generation of uh, revolutionary wagons railway wagons will continue uh, being relevant. So, uh, our message is we have to upgrade our rolling, rolling stock, our wagon fleet. Um, and introduce uh, new uh, rolling stock varieties, uh, but it's something, uh, rolling stock is something uh, that needs uh, technical uh, maintenance. Uh, what is your take uh, on, uh, on the depot repairs and the state of deep, uh, this, uh, the situation with depot repairs and technical maintenance? How well, it, well is it organized? We as, uh, as rolling stock manufacturers uh, it's, our, it's our primary concern to make sure uh, there are, the market has a sufficient number of spare parts and components for repairs, for depot repairs. In the current market context, uh, as we see it, uh, the current situation, in the current situation, we see no shortage in spare parts or in spare components. I don't think, I don't think uh, supplying spare parts uh, is, a, is a problem. Well, at the end of last year, my colleagues and I, uh, we had a discussion so we just, uh, we just sad, we just sad, uh, sad. Uh, the time was nearing. Uh, uh, we were our bogies, our bogies, uh, our bogies were going to be soon be repaired, to have to be repaired. Other parts of our innovative wagons were going to have to be repaired, and the general consensus was uh, the market. The market is ready, is 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 largely prepared, uh, and to such uh, to such repairs, to run these repairs on innovative. Uh, 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 trains uh, from the standpoint of spare parts. Um, well, we have, we run a subsidiary, a subsidiary, uh, and our subsidiary uh, distributes uh, spare parts. And it's, it, it's this subsidiary which is, uh, which is responsible for, for supplying spare parts to all of the, the repair sites and depots. Uh, it, uh, it's responsible, uh, responsible uh, for liaising with uh, uh, rolling stock owners, uh, for supplying them with spare parts. So we don't see any potential problems, problems here. Let me ask. Uh, Sergei Sergeyevich, a question to you. You, you operate uh, quite, uh, quite a rare type of, uh, of rolling stock trains, the so-called uh, assembled or consolidated tanks, uh, tank wagons. Uh, do you run into, uh, into repair issues, uh, repair-related uh, issues or spare part-related issues? We've been operating uh, these trains uh, for quite a short period of time. And we can say that this type of rolling stock, uh, consolidated tanks, they are, quite, uh, they are quite reliable. And we have to only rarely decouple them for repairs. And the frequency of such decoupling, uh, decoupled repairs is, is quite is relatively low. And situations like uh, um, wheelbox 
catching fire uh, or overheating catching fire or similar cases uh, is, 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 is relatively low, which again is very good uh, for, for our financial indicators. Right, you run, you run hundreds of uh, tank wagons. So it's not a popular variety, uh, but you, colleague, uh, I'm talking to you, you run lots of uh, conventional wagons. Uh, do, you run, uh, do you run into uh, issues with, uh, uh, with uh, the, supply, the supply of spare parts? As I've already mentioned, we haven't, we haven't had any issues uh, with spare parts of late. Uh, it's uh, car repairing sites and car repairing plants uh, that purchase spare parts, and they they just keep uh, keep the deadlines and keep the timetables, uh, so we don't have any issues with it. The only issue is uh, is the availability, is the cost, is the price of wheel sets. I don't think it's a fair price they charge us for, uh, for wheel sets. Thank you. So unfortunately, uh, we don't have any question, any colleagues present today we could uh, ask this question about uh, unfair, unfair price for spare parts. But it's not only gondola cars as we're discussing now, which is the, uh, the widest, yeah, which is in the widest use indeed. But we're discussing uh, rolling stock related uh, issues. I mean, rolling stock uh, and railway wagons uh, that have been designed recently. These consolidated wagon railway wagons or assembled wagons, articulated wagons, uh, we've shown them at fairs and at exhibitions. How well, how well are they penetrating the market? How well are they used? Uh, how, how well are they me, uh, winning the market? So we've got a representative of the Tixol company, and this Tixol company is probably the largest uh, owner of, uh, of this articulated type. While we were designing this uh, railway wagon variety, we just wanted to scrutinize uh, foreign practices and we realized uh, the United States, in the United States, uh, such articulated uh, uh, types are uh, flat cars. Uh, it's flat, flat cars, flat wagons, which are articulated for economic reasons. But in the Russian context, if we take into account uh, the fees uh, for the use of such wagons, it's, uh, it's for the transport of gases that such articulated and for the transport of oil products that such articulated uh, wagons are uh, most widely used. Why is this the case? We didn't have any established tariffs for such articulated varieties uh, for wagons with a carrying capacity of uh, over 80 tons. 80 tons. Um, so we see today that lack of such established uh, tariff plans or fee plans uh, or established fees, it's the uh, main obstacle, the main predicament which stands in the way uh, to the implementation of such articulated trains uh, and wagons uh, uh, Russian-wide. Speaking of articulated rail, uh, rail wagons, how do you count the mileage uh, of such an articulation, of such a combination? How do you do you uh, do you process them through the take them through the customs as was one wagon or two wagons or several wagons? And how do you score the mileage? We act on the assumption it's one item, one item, uh, not two wagons. 
or several. Thank you. Thank you so much for bringing bringing it up. Speaking of articulated wagons, uh, I mean, are to using articulated wagons for the transport of gas. Uh, you know, we have even. So what we are observing, uh, what we are observing, is that there are there are issues uh, which have to do with lack of with deficiencies uh, of uh, uh, with the deficiencies in the elite regulatory uh, regulatory framework that regulate uh, the operation of such wagons. We already understand how to consider all innovative rail cars that come to us, not only from standpoint of internal regulatory documents, but also from the international contracts that we conclude in the framework of SNGS. Thank you. Right away, another question. The rail cars with replaceable bodies is not purely Russian invention. This type of rolling stock exists for a long time and are created in Europe. In your view, we believe there is a tank cars, and we know that experience of operation is quite successful. What are the other types? Replacement bodies. What are other articulated wagons and principally new types of wagons can be implemented and in your view will be demanded by the operators and the cargo owners? We spoke in detail at the Technological Council of Russian Railways. We determined the factors of development. There are two directions in our view. One of those was discussed in detail. Increase of efficiency, the return on the mass cargo transportation by using heavy weight trains and articulated rail cars but what I would say, we see serious need of the market for the satisfaction of growing demand for internet trading. We see experience of our colleagues in China, where, trans where they build rolling stock, freight rolling stock for transportation on the high-speed rail in order to pay in the morning internet store the purchase in Beijing and in the evening to receive the purchase in Shanghai. They work on this and I believe it's already reality. The market, in my view, already determines this needs. It needs speed of such transportation. It needs articulated and joined of different modes of transportation and seamless movement between railway and other modes of transport. No less important, we didn't speak much about it, is information flow that accompanies all events with the cargo or the wagon. The clients are concerned with what happens to the cargo, where it is, what is the status of cargo, what are the consumer's qualities, did they change or did it not change. There is demand for this. I think that together with our colleagues, rail car builders will offer something such as solution. Thank you. Do understand it correctly? That's a new view. The market is waiting from rail car builders, not only heavy rail cars. It waits for the high-speed rail cars that allow to transport quickly. Absolutely correct. Rail cars that can travel quickly, the rail cars that allow to carry more rather than standard van and colleagues from FGK work on this and electric locomotives that satisfy this need. More than two times can fit in stand on standard pallets rather than automotive trailer. 
Thank you. Colleagues, unfortunately, the time of our discussion is coming to the end. But I'd like to briefly draw a summary line and ask the last question. We can see that on the market there's need for the new rolling stock and readiness to produce it. Carry Russian railways can create conditions so that this rolling stock is operated properly. And there's understanding that the time has come for principal renewal and upgrade of fleet. The time has come. The only operators and freight owners must possess desire for enterprise entrepreneurial risk and readiness to assume operation of rail cars, new rail cars, and they should not be afraid of technical and organizational issues. My question to Sergei Alexandrovich. You have stably operating company, huge fleet of rolling stock. Are you ready to risk and purchase new type of rolling stock to experiment and see how market reacts to this rolling stock? Alexey Vladimirovich, the question is very interesting. I don't know how much capacity I have to disclose all the secrets, but I'd like to answer. In our company, we have a lot of scientific research and development of new types of rolling stock. In this work, we involve all leading institutes, industrial institutes, capable of working on this new rolling stock. Like this. Yes, I'm ready. Thank you. Thank you very much, colleagues. The only thing I have to do is to express my thanks for participation and for your time, for your attendance of our session, attendance of our discussion. I'm sure it was beneficial for all of us and for those who are listening to us, for those who will be reading the news about what we were talking about. Thank you, everyone. I wish health in this not easy time. I'm hoping that we will meet tradi as traditionally in Sochi, vis-a-vis, -vis in more convenient conditions. Thank you and goodbye. Our dear viewers, the last panel discussion of this International Transport and Logistics Forum has just finished. This panel discussion was dis dedicated to the plug and fleet renewal in the new reality of freight transportation. And we can state with all the confidence that this, is, this was a unique forum in terms of the coverage and the participation. We have asked the leading industry experts about their impressions from this forum. Now let us hear what they have to say. 
интересно и качественно. I like the information, it was interesting, and the quality was high. We had very fruitful discussions, both on-site and online. This is a new experience for all the participants, because we are all used to going to Sochi and talking to each other there. But uh, I can say that this is a good format for now, but uh, we shouldn't get accustomed to that. This is a very good format, meaning that so we saved a lot of time on traveling, on traffic jams, and uh, I think that we should keep this format because it helps us to connect uh, different cities, connect with our, our colleagues in other locations, and even in Moscow, people can easily connect uh, to the session they're interested in, but no problem at all. Of course, we were forced to hold this forum online due to this whole situation. There are certain pluses and minuses. The minuses are that you can't see your colleagues face to face and you can't talk to them on the margins, but the pluses are that the coverage is much wider. As a moderator of one of the sessions, I can say that uh, one of the biggest takeaways I have that this is the first conference uh, where we haven't lost a single speaker and this is indeed a great achievement in itself. As to the the biggest minuses, well, the minuses are obvious. Uh, we can't talk to our colleagues face to face. And this forum was the venue uh, where all the railway professionals come to, and uh, they would come not for the panel discussions, but for the face to face informal communication on the venue. And, uh, it's a pity that uh, we can't do that now. As to the discussion side, well, uh, we haven't lost any of that during this forum because uh, the online format brings more discipline to the discussion. Well, despite the pandemic and the recession, this forum has happened. It has happened in the new online forum format, bringing together all the people interested in the latest trends uh, in this industry. Godot Publishing House would like to invite you to two more events that will be held uh, until the end of this year. This will be the regional forums. First of all, promotion Siberia, which will discuss the Eastern Siberian Railway Network, where a large-scale development is now underway. We will discuss development of transport corridors, freight movement to and from Siberia, development of multimodal logistics hubs, the present and the future of container shipment, innovations, and building an efficient transportation process. And the second forum we're inviting you to is Promotion South, where we will discuss the cooperation between the southern Russian regions and multimodal transportation. We will discuss how to take the transportation market to a new level. Uh, we will bring together representatives of all the key authorities, market players, shippers, railway operators, and railway industry experts. At this point, uh, we are closing the, this International Transport and Logistics Forum Promotion 1520. My name is... Мы – транспортно-логистический холдинг «Российские железные дороги». Мы развиваем транспортную инфраструктуру страны, строим новые станции, вокзалы и создаем новые возможности для вашего бизнеса. Делая мир максимально доступным для всех, мы адаптируем вокзалы и транспортные узлы под нужды каждого. Более миллиарда поездок каждый год совершают наши пассажиры. Лучшие скоростные и высокоскоростные поезда сделают ваше путешествие комфортным, быстрым и безопасным. 
Мы вовремя доставляем наших пассажиров в пункты назначения, чтобы вы не пропустили самые яркие моменты жизни. Мы – самый экологичный транспорт. Стремясь сохранить природу и пейзажи за окном поезда, мы вносим еще больше вклад в охрану окружающей среды, экономя воду, сортируя отходы и сокращая выбросы. Новые маршруты и легендарные направления. Безупречная репутация надежного партнера. Мы развиваемся и бережем наше наследие, сокращая расстояние и сближая людей. Внедряя передовые цифровые и квантовые технологии, мы предлагаем удобные электронные сервисы для грузоотправителей и приближаем будущее. Мы – локомотив экономики. Сотни миллионов тонн грузов ежегодно. Развитие науки, промышленности и социальной сферы – это наш вклад в благосостояние страны и вашу уверенность в завтрашнем дне. Российские железные дороги. Мы меняемся для вас.